Welcome to part 4B, this one's gonna be. Yeah, part 4B of the TR tutorial. Um, I apologise for this sort of going off track away from the turret part for a bit, onto like the enemies. But to make sure the turret, to make a working turret, you need a working enemy, really. So yeah, and I like to just, I like to sort of go all out with stuff, so yeah. Sorry. <laughs> If you don't want to do this part, you don't really have to do this UI part, like if you want to skip to this video again. But it's kind of a nice sort of extra bit to it. So, first of all, uh, right click on an enemy. And then go down to UI. And you want to select canvas. Now I know you can't see it in the video and I apologise, it's my recording software. It's just sort of how it acts. Now, in this render mode here, when you click on it, the bottom one should be world space. So you are set up so it's in world space, and then we're going to set it to zero, zero, and adjust its height to one to eight by one to eight. Now we're going to make it tiny because this is massive. Zero point zero one by zero point zero one. That's about the same size as this guy. Okay, so once you've got that, this is actually going to be placed. Yeah. Now, what we're going to do with this, we're going to place a slider onto it, and then it's going to be a health bar for the player. So, I'm going to rename it to Enemy Canvas. And then right click again, select UI, and this time select Slider. And the first thing we're going to do is. Just click on hand slide area and delete that so it gets rid of this bit i'm going to set this right part to five okay so now we just need to set the anchor points for this so if you click on this if you click on this square here and i'm afraid you can't see this in the video due to the current software yet again but the one that you want is on the right the stretch column you want the top row you want the row that's labeled top on the left. So if you click on that one, that's what you sort of need. Then your symbol should look like this with the red bar along the top. So top and stretch. Now set these to all to zero, zero, zero. There you go, so that's getting placed there. Leave height as 20 for now. Like if you have change height is how sort of thick the bar is, but I'm going to leave that at 20. You can play around with this later if you want. It's just for now. Uh, let's set some colours. So, background. This is the colour when it's sort of depleted a bit. So, I'm going to have that as red. And fill area. And wrap up. Fill. Uh, I'm going to set this to sort of a dark green. Actually, no. About that green, yeah. About that green. So, yeah, I'm going to set mine like that. And now when you click on Monzo's to a set, it's clicking the slider. This value here, you can drag it back and forth. And as you can see, the bar goes down. And it sort of goes from full green to red. So, just sort of a nice... Sliders are nice needs to make it health balls with. So, so, that's now set up so we can... Now what we're going to do is use code to manipulate this to sort of change how much health you now. So if we go to the game view... You guys see the health bar above the character. Actually, that's really small. I am going to double the height. Just to make it... Yeah, that's way more apparent. Yeah, I'm going to leave it like that. Uh, you can, I might get around to it in this with these tutorials, but I don't know. But we'll try and make it so that this is always looking at the camera. So that way you always know how much health you've got. Because obviously there, that would be a bit difficult to see if you're looking down from the top. So yeah, anyway, that's just a small thing for later, if we get time. So now that we've got our UI set up, let's set up some code to actually display properly with this UI. So we're going to create a, another script, and we're going to call it health UI. And then go ahead and open that. Alright, so in the health UI script, the first thing you need to do is, we're going to use using. And what we're going to do is system, no, no, it's not, sorry, unity engine, 
Ui. So this will give us access to public slider. This means we can pass that slider that we just made in as um, a parameter to this function. That's it, so sorry, to this script. But way about doing that UI stuff, you end up having to do like UI.slider or something. I think it's actually a bit more complicated than that. I always just do the using Unity UI stuff. It's a lot cleaner. So yeah, so public slider, and uh, record slider. Then what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna use the messaging systems thing. So if you go to your health script that we wrote in the last video, I get to this receive message and I'm just gonna copy this whole bit. And paste drop this into there. Get rid of that. Shift tab. Don't know what I just did. Don't know why shift tab. Tab. There we go. And instead of doing this. Actually yeah, what I'm gonna do is message handler. I'm just gonna it a local for this part because I don't need to know the message handler because I'm not gonna be sending any with this. I'm just gonna be receiving them. So get component message handler message handler message handler versus the group receive message. There you go. So that's the message stuff ready to receive the message. And we want the health changed. We don't want our data as that. We want health data, call it HP data, and then, not new, sorry, message data as health data. Then if HP data doesn't equal null, right. So, yeah, again, I'm gonna write a function for this next bit. You could write in here if you really want to, but I like to keep this stuff separate. I like to keep my received message stuff clean because otherwise it can get very like big and annoying with more complicated classes. Sorry. Right. So I gotta do void and I call it update UI. Update UI, brackets, brackets. Okay, so update UI is going to take two things, in the max health and another in for crit health. So the two things that come through with that message. And what we'll do in here is, well, actually it needs to be one line for this, so may have been a bit much to put in its own function, but eh, so it's done now. So value equals one. What we're going to do is, uh, you do 1.0f divided by the max health. So this gives you the value of, so say max health was 10. 1 divided by 10 in this situation would result in 0 0.1. Then if my current health is 5, that's 0 0.5. So that'll sort of do halfway. So dividing by the max and then times by the current will get you the percentage pretty much of progress. So even with more complex numbers, this still works. So no matter what max health is and what current health is, this should work. As long as current health is less than or equal to max health. If it's greater than, then you start getting numbers that are greater than one and you don't want that. But if your current health is greater than your max health, then you don't want that either. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah, do one divided by max health times our current health and that's your slider value. And that's, that's that for the health UI. So this is actually a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. So what we'll do is we'll do the damage stuff as well. So we'll save that and quickly jump over Unity and make sure that's sort of okay. So in Unity, if you grab your enemy and give it a message handler, a health, health set to 100 by default, and a health UI, then add the, to the messages, you want three messages damaged health changed and died. Then for that slider, it's this nice one here. So it's nice and fast set up. So this enemy is set up ready to take damage. 
but obviously we don't do damage yet. So we are going to take in part two of all this where we set up our projectiles. So we'll first do the normal one and then we'll do the tracking and beam. So yeah, so quickly jump back to code and let's set up fast to see this health in action. Alright, so what you want to open is a base projectile. Well yeah, for base projectile we actually need to add one more parameter. And this is going to be a float and it's going to be attack speed. This is going to be required for the beam later. And this, it, we're just going to use the fire rate from the turret. And it's necessary for the beam, but we have to add it here for all of them to have access to it. So, yeah, so add your fill out attack speed. Then, normal projectile, add it here. This is the downside of this system. If you update in one place, you can update in all of them. And that's very annoying. Uh, there, there, and oops, there. If any of this looks different to yours, by the way, I did sort of do all this before and then get rid of all, all the code, so I may have stuff that I fixed and didn't sort of notice. So I apologise for that. So if there's any inconsistencies, just let me know and I'll try and work through them so that you understand what I've changed. And in here, we want the... Where is it? Where's the fire projectile? Uh, let's put the down. There we go, fire protects on here. So damage and then fire rate. So there you go, that's all the day now to have the attack speed come through as well for when we sell the beams damage. So, but for the normal projectile for now, first thing we need to do is we need three things. We are going to need the. Not public, sorry. Uh, we're going to need the. Yeesh. Game object. The launcher. So he fired me. Uh, who was I fired at? And how much damage am I doing? Uh, what we're going to do is void. On collision. Oops. Oops. That's not right. On collision, enter. Collision. Other. So it's if over the game object equal equals our target. Then we go what send a message telling it you've taken damage. And we're also gonna destroy ourselves if we collide with anything. So this way if a wall's in the way, this projectile will get destroyed. And if it hits the target, it'll get destroyed as well. So, other the game I said equal equals and it's got target. Uh, that's fine. Uh, let's see. Yeah, actually, if I hit another projectile, I don't want to destroy myself though. It's the one thing. So, if other that get component, if other the game I get component base projectile. equals null. There we go. So if it doesn't have a base projectile script and you hit it, destroy ourselves, yeah. Alright, so this other day game object equal to target. So yeah, now we send a message to the person that we hit. So this is going to be a damage message, so damage data. Damage data equals new damage data. And damage data only had one thing, damage. So that's going to equal it. Down up by now. And let's go damage. Then we will need to see. Yeah, I'll we'll do this. Let's handle message handler equals get component. Message handler. If message handler message handler dot give message. Yeah. 
starts getting tedious writing that stuff out, but yeah. Damaged. The yo who sent it is the launcher. So we aren't the one. Obviously the bullet didn't send itself, someone else did. So that's gonna be the launcher. And the message data is the damage data that we just wrote. So there we go. When these things collide with it, it will send a message saying you've been damaged. So oh. I forgot to set it there. We just need to set those variables that we just made. So launcher. Then right put a comma. Target equals target. And damage equals damage. There you go. So launch target damage. All those now have something. And yeah. So let's go back to Unity. And hopefully these bullets should now deal damage. The mistake I made was this is meant to be damage data, not damage data. Yeah. I passed through the actual class instead of my instance of the class okay so now back to unity okay so now that we've got rid of those er well, that error hopefully these bullets will hurt this guy oh i know what i did wrong we need to actually change something here in our last video we added a rigid body to oh this is what i forgot to change when i we did this. Yeah. In the last video, we added a rigid body to the turret. You are going to want to remove that from this turret so the turret does not have a rigid body. You want to set this guy up with a rigid body. So, this. And what you want to do is X, Y, Z. Freeze all of those. Rigid bodies, like positionalization, that means the rigid body. Literally, the rigid body is frozen. You can still rotate and move it, but the rigid body can't. That's all that means. So, so good to do that. And make sure you untick gravity. You do not want this thing floating off. Uh, so that actually means that it isn't the issue I thought it was. Um, what's the issue? Oh, they are getting destroyed. They just aren't sending the message to him. Oh. Uh, I know it might be. Yeah. The mistake I made was this should be I mean it's your target. Don't get component. Oh silly. Okay. As actually we were sending the message to back to itself, the projectile, but the projectile don't have a message handler, so nothing came of it. So now I'll actually send it to this guy. Still now? Great. She's that car wide. So, I went and had a quick look around to see what the issue was. And so you may have noticed that in the health UI, I never called the update UI function. <sighs> that was so smart of me. Um, yeah, so I hate speed data. Max health, HP there, current health. There we go. And now it will work. God. <sighs> See, I always make small mistakes and they're real pain to fight sometimes. Now. Yes, now we actually lose health when bullets hit us. Well, when they hit this guy. So yeah, so that's the no projectile to deal damage. Now let's set up the others. So jump over the no projectile. Right to go rob this whole bit. Because tracking projectiles get act pretty much the same. Except I'm going to update part of tracking projectile because... Oh, so we're going to do the no projectile actually. For now, add destroy game object 10 right now they're sort of lasting forever and we don't really want that so after 10 seconds they'll destroy themselves this way but we'll try and figure out a bit nicer way to do that but for now that'll do we're gonna do i know we'll do an okay way with the tracking stuff because it's a lot easier to sort of work out uh but with that it's very subjective so we'll see what we're gonna do 
But for this, what we need is game object, launcher again, in damage, and also a vector three called Evan Skull last known position. So what we're going to do is in here um and got last known position equals oh he's targeting this way target transform position symbol and it's got launcher equals launcher and it's got damage equals damage that's the best record and this will work the same as it did in the last one okay so in this update here what we want to do is If the hmm, oh, if there is a target, we don't actually want to move this. This is always going to move. And it's going to move towards the last known position instead. And then what we're going to do in here is last known position. Oops, that was not what I thought it was. Last known position is going to equal the target's position. So as long as we've got a target, we'll update last known position. But as soon as the target gets destroyed, we will just head straight to its last known position. And because we're using move towards, it will actually end up equaling it. So if our transition equals the last, oops, the last, God, why is it all going? Yeah, last known position. Then we will destroy ourselves. So in the case when the target is destroyed, the remaining projectiles actually travel to where it was and destroy themselves. So yeah, now our tracking bullet should work for damage. I said this the last time with a normal projectile and that didn't work, but I have faith and that's important. So yeah, this, just on me, play. Yep, yeah, so let's go shoot at it. Uh, it doesn't die, so we can't actually witness the other bit working, but yeah. It hits at least health, so that's actually working, that's helpful. Now for the complicated one. Well, I say complicated one. The more complicated one, but it's not a complicated. The beam weapon. So, I guess I'll am here this time instead. So, C, and tick. Cool. Um, that's all for that. So now we'll jump into code and take out the beam. Alright, so for this beam projectile, we're going to need, yeah again, same as before, target, damage, now we need two more, uh, attack speed, and attack timer. What we'll do is, when we fire this, we will... Reset the attack timer. Uh, attack speed will equal attack speed. I can't do it in this upside down for some reason. Don't know why. Let's target equals target. And damage equals damage. Got it in great order. Um, okay. So, if we've been fired. Yeah, so now we need to do a raycast. So the way we get handless is we'll do a raycast towards target and if we're hitting the target then we'll deal damage every zero point, well, damage every time the attack speed. So right now it's set to 0.2 so every 0.2 seconds we will deal 5 damage because that's what damage set as well. So I'm just going to call this hit and don't need to set anything. So then what you do is if physics dot raycast. So a raycast will pretty much draw a line in say draw a line but a raycast will draw a line in sort of code memory you won't actually see the line it's non-physical and what what it'll tend to do is it'll check between the points and if something's sort of in the way it'll return that for you and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use what it returns and if it returns the right thing we're gonna deal damage so this is raycast we need the start of it, which is the launcher's position. So there's the start. 
and the end. No, we need the direction. So start direction out hit. So this will return what I hit. And then, like you can see here, origin direction, hit info, and then max distance. So in this case, the beam up. And physics.raycast will return true. It's a ball. It's like, returns a ball. So yeah, it will return true if it hits anything. So we know hit's not going to be null in here. So what we'll do is if hit.game object. No, hit dot transform dot game object, yeah. Equal equals our target. So if we hit our target, oh, in this update, what we're going to do is I'm just going to attack timer plus equals time delta. Time. So keep increasing timer. Uh, if m underscore attack timer is greater than or equal to our attack speed. I did like that. Yeah. It's greater than equal to our attack speed, then we're going to deal damage to it. So, what I'll do is jump into the track projectile. Steal this, because lazy. Take that, deal damage. Cool. Go down, and then we'll just go attack timer. We'll get reset. And that's it. So, we will now do a fizz. Well, they'll do raycast and deal damage over time if it's sort of getting hit. So, hopefully that'll work. So let's jump back to the game and see if we're right. Well, see if I'm right. Tried to bring us all into that. Don't want it just to be me that's the one at fault. He, <laughs> let's see. Yes, good. So the beams go through and it takes damage. Okay, so. My throat's getting a bit dry, so that's going to be it for this video. In the next video, we'll add the death of those. And finally, for the reason why we did this, we will set up the other two types of AI state. The weakest and strongest. So targeting the thing with the most, with the highest max health, and the thing with the least max health. So, I hope this is helpful. I hope you enjoyed the video. And, yeah. Thank you for watching. Bye.